Hi there, it's the end of January. Hurrah! And today I have a book review for you and it is for you historical novel lovers. It is The Lady of the Ravens by Joanna Hickson. Yes. This is another one of those historical novels um, where the main character is based on a real person. And in this instance, it was uh, a person called Joan Vaux, V-A-U-X, who was a courtier in the time of Henry VII. And the book starts quite soon after uh, Richard III's defeat at the Battle of Bosworth and uh, Henry VII has become king. And at the beginning, uh, Joan is one of uh, Elizabeth of York's attendants, so just before she marries Henry the Seventh, and of course, if you know your history, you know that uh, Henry the Seventh was a, a Lancasterian, and Elizabeth, of course, was a, was from the York family. Henry the Seventh effectively brought the long-term Wars of the Roses to an end um, with his beginning of the Tudor age and his marriage to Elizabeth of York, so thereby bringing the two houses together. However, of course, there were a few problems, as always the case when these kind of uh, royal rivalries happen and one king takes over, there's always going to be um, other parts of the family who believe they have better right to the, the throne. There were the princes in the tower that we still don't know whether they died or not. And there were other cousins of the Yorkist uh, family who may have had better right to the throne when you look at the family tree. So that's kind of the setting. Joan herself, the book is um, kind of narrated, but it's in first person as if narrated by her. And she was actually a, uh, an immigrant to England and her mother had attended Queen Marguerite, who was the wife of King Henry VI, who had been the last Lancastrian king. The character of Joan, she's a very pleasant, well, highly intelligent. She likes to read, uh, which is, off she goes, uh, which is fairly unusual for the time. But she has a, at the beginning of the book, she has, a, a, it's apparent that she has a great fear of childbirth and she does not want to get married at all. But of course, if you're uh, in the court of one of these two demonics, then you have a lot of pressure on you. And to be, when Queen, when Elizabeth of York became Queen Elizabeth as the wife of Henry VII, it was said that a lady in waiting uh, on that queen really should be married. So she does marry. Um, she marries a man called Sir Richard Guildford and she became Lady Joan Guildford. And it's not a marriage of choice. And it starts out, fair, they start out fairly indifferent to each other. And she does have a child. It's a very, very difficult birth. But things kind of get better in in that respect. Now, where do the ravens come in? Well, it is very apparent right from the start. She's very familiar with the Tower of London. She has a great love of the ravens that live there. And when she becomes Richard Guildford's wife, she is there a lot because he has a residence inside the perimeters of the Tower of London. And she kind of champions these birds. Now, as with all historical novels are based on a real person. It's always very difficult um, to, to form a really coherent plot because real life doesn't tend to work in sort of the usual kind of plot terms, like, you know, real beginning and middle and an end and something that the person wants and is, you know, finds difficult to achieve. It, it doesn't really work like that. So you have to find something to bring, uh, something to latch on to, to give a more sort of coherent 
kind of plan for, for the novel. It makes it very difficult. And of course, there needs to be conflict. There is conflict in the novel, of course, personally, uh, she has this fear of childbirth, uh, she doesn't want to be married and she has, you know, she has to do both. She has an enemy, um, a, a man called Sir Henry Wyatt, who is the control of the Tower of London and who hates the Ravens. And you think at the beginning, oh, that's going to be a really strong plot line, but he comes in and out of it here and there. And there are some difficult scenes with him, but it, it it's not really, it's still not really a strong narrative. So then, of course, there is the conflict of the Yorkist uprisings and particularly the pretenders who claim to be the princes uh, who were kept in the tower by Richard III and who are believed to be dead. But there's always been a question over that and there still is to this day. So we have and this, but it's more towards the end of the novel, we have these um, threats to Henry VII's throne and how it affects Joan and how it affects Queen Elizabeth. So that is a nice bit of plot towards the end. Uh, incidentally, uh, it's an interesting bit of history that, and I recently saw a documentary presented by Robert Rinder about the princes in the tower and about some very new evidence that has recently come to light that he went to see and look at to see if he felt that there was any uh, truth in it. He was very, very dubious about, uh, I mean, the strong belief has been generally that they died. But the rumour was that they, and this comes out in the book, the rumour was that they, they had left England and they had gone to stay with their aunt, the Duchess of Burgundy, who was a very, very strong Yorkist and had grown up uh, with her and she had encouraged them to try and take back the throne of England. And these were the two pretenders that, that, that did try to come back and raise an army to threaten Henry VII. But at the time it was thought that mainly that they were pretenders, they were not the, the two uh, princes who had been in the tower uh, Richard and Edward. But in this documentary I saw there's been this new evidence come to light of various letters that really did quite strongly suggest that those young boys who grew up in the uh, residence of the Countess of Burgundy, the Duchess of Burgundy rather, were actually the princes. So that was really interesting, a very fascinating piece of history and, and it was um, actually brought to light by the person who was dominant in finding uh, Richard III's burial place underneath that Leicester car park. So it's all very interesting. But back to this. <clears throat> so that's basically the premise. Joan, though, becomes Lady Jane Guildford. Did I enjoy reading it? I did enjoy reading it. I enjoyed the historical background. It's it's well researched in that respect. I have some problems with it. So as I said, writing a novel about a real person uh, has its problems because it's difficult to form a very coherent narrative, a real strong plot. So I think what she's done is she's taken the story of the ravens and it's based on the legend that if the ravens leave the Tower of London, then England will fall. Um, and I know that I've heard of that legend. It's a legend that uh, we still have. And um, a lot, last time I looked, they were still there, by the way. No, we're all right. But she's based this whole thing about, about the ravens on that legend and calls her the Lady of the Ravens. She's used that at, as a kind of running theme to try and bring the novel together as a, a, a coherent whole. And it doesn't quite work for me. First of all, it, I really didn't think it quite rang true. Was there any historical basis for this person having this strong kind of almost obsession 
with the ravens and championing them and looking after them. <clears throat> I wasn't absolutely sure, so I looked it up. And there was nothing in it in her author's notes at the back, which I thought was a bit odd, considering the, the book is called The Lady of the Ravens, and, and it's such a strong theme. And I looked it up, and there's absolutely nothing historical to say that she had any connection with the Ravens of the Tower of London. And in fact, the legend may even not have been in place at that time. Uh, certainly, there were probably wild ravens living at the Tower of London at the time. We don't really know. Uh, and it's only the first reference to the ravens is in Charles II's time, much later. So I found that a bit disappointing, considering that the title is The Lady of the Ravens, and she's, she's based a very, very strong theme around that. And there's it's completely fabricated. Now, uh, of course, when you're writing about a real person in history, you have to make some things up because we just don't know everything. You know, there's a lot of detail you, you have to put in that you have to guess and uh, try and work out. But if you're going to create a strong theme for a person a, his, a true historical person, in, in my book, <laughs> it really needs to be based on some historical fact, even if it's just some line in a history book that, you know, you can pick up or just something, just one little historical fact that you can pick up to build that theme on. But there is absolutely nothing and I I really did find that a big problem with it. It doesn't really quite work. It doesn't quite ring true. It seems a bit odd. And so th that was my main problem with the book. And the other problem is that you, you keep waiting for something really big to happen. And it, it there's no sort of real build up. There's there's no sort of really big um, event that 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 creates that sort of tension built up and then fall again. There are smaller events, but they're, they're kind of dealt with and then they, they go. So I don't get me wrong, I enjoyed reading it. What is good is it's very refreshing to have a book set in the time of Henry VII because most writers who write historical novels in the Tudor period tend to focus on Henry VIII and, or Queen Elizabeth. So I was quite happy when I picked up this book. I thought, oh, great, you know, that, that looks really interesting, um, Henry VII's time. And it is an interesting period. So I did enjoy that element of it. I really did. So don't get me wrong. If you are interested in Tudor history and really would like to read a novel set in that time, then I, yeah, go ahead and read it. And I'd be interested to know what your thoughts are about uh, how it works but it, it it's just that major problem for me and the fact that is the title is the lady of the ravens there's no historical you know she wasn't called that in history um and that that is a major problem for me because <laughs> i do like things to have some basis in history uh, but maybe that's just me um and there is a sequel to it there are two books i believe in uh this series the second because she does go I believe she actually went on and had a second marriage um and I think the second book is called The Queen's Lady so if you want to buy them both at the same time I might you know I'm I'm not rushing out to buy uh the next one but if I see it in a charity shop I may well pick it up because I just do love the historical detail but as I said I liked it, but with some major problems. And that's that's my opinion. So believe it or not, February begins tomorrow. We thought it would never come. And uh, hmm, I feel a book list coming on. In fact, I've got a couple of ideas for next month. So keep watching. I'll see you soon. Bye for now. <laughs>